celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Singing along. <laughs> Hey everybody, how are you? It's the Ramble. We go until uh, midnight tonight, the Eastern Daylight Time. Why? I have absolutely no idea, but hopefully we'll be joined soon by the Citizens Panel. I may go to it a little earlier tonight because I don't have a guest. I don't have any pre-recorded interview, and I have nothing to say. No, really, I have nothing to say. Uh, it... It, it, it's just that everything I would say is redundant, and it all starts with that fucking asshole. Okay, so I, 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 I really don't want to uh, add, add that to my grief. You know, I'm worried enough about things. I terrorize. I, can I give you a little, uh, uh, can I lie down on the couch here, okay, and, and uh, uh, rent my soul out to you for a couple of minutes? I, every year I come up on a, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, a medical deal, you know, a, a yearly checkup, which at my age, you know, really you just check to see if there's still a pulse and if you're above room temperature. Um, but I worry about it every year because I know one year I'm going to go there and he's going to go, this doesn't look good. This looks terrible. Now, I know it's happened to other people here. Phil had it happen a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm just, you know, I figure I'm, I'm 78 years old. I'm very lucky. I've lived longer than a lot of my peers. I read about them dying all the time. Uh, outside of my feet, which get numb, uh, I have no other symptoms of anything. And that's probably a nerve in my back. Uh, and uh, I've been feeling a little fatigued lately, but I think that had to do with some medication I was taking, so I stopped that. And, uh, you know, I, I have nothing to really worry about, and yet I'm worried about it. Like my PSA test last year, which was for the prostate, was up a whole point, which is kind of scary. But then again, I figured I think I know why, and that was because in the period of time between the last time I had seen the doctor and that time, I had lost 55 pounds on the low-carbohydrate diet which involves a lot of meat, and eating a lot of meat can raise your PSA. So, But I'm worried that my PSA is going to go up. But then I went to my urologist, and he says, get another one in six months. So in six months, I went and got one and went down three-tenths of a point. So obviously, there's no velocity on that. So really, what do I have to worry about? Everything. I'm sitting here. I, I said to girlfriend, she's going to sleep, right? I was Pleasant dreams, dear. And by the way, I'm afraid of dying. You know, because I've always, all my life, I've had this great fear of death. Um, I, I, I remember having my first fear of death when I was, uh, I don't know, about seven, eight years old. You know, I started worrying about it. Uh, and I, I, I uh, uh, wondered, uh, I didn't like the idea that you were going to be in a state where you don't know you're dead. But you don't know anything. Nothing exists. And that concept totally has evaded me all my life. I, I feel, I, 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 I'm jealous of people who have religion, okay, and believe in God and believe in Christ and believe in all that bullshit because they believe that when they die, this is just, you know, this is biding time on planet Earth, but when you get to heaven, that's really where your destiny is and things are going to be wonderful, wonderful way. You really want to play a harp all day? Really? Really? That's not my instrument of choice. I mean, they could have made it worse, though. They could have had, uh, in heaven, just nothing but accordions, right? But no, they have, they have, uh, they, <laughs> they have harps. So somebody said, I think it was Mark Twain that said, why is it that Christians are so desirous of going to a place that they can't even stand to spend time in one day a week? meaning churches, you know, where you go there and there are a lot of prayer. Well, it's prayer time now here in heaven. Oh, God. Is, are they having fun in hell? Is there anything going on in hell that I'm missing? I'm probably missing all my good friends, you know, who, who, who are, uh, um, uh, you know, having a good time, having a party. And they're having a party without me. 
But no, I, if I were a Christian and I was a devout Christian, I would believe that when I die, I'm going to go meet great Aunt Bertha. You know, she's waiting up there to see me. And, uh, I'm, you know, I, I do wonder what's on the other side, although I don't think there's anything. And I, well, I've told the story before, but I'll say it again, because my father was a very wise guy. And whenever I wanted to um, uh, find something out that was bothering me, I would ask him. And he always had a very wise answer. And I told him about this fear of death that I had. And I said, I can't imagine not existing, you know. Uh, suddenly one day I'm existing and then I'm not existing anymore. And he said, why is that strange to you? You've been there before. And he was right. Of course, before you were born, you didn't exist. What was that like? And then I started to think about that and that kept me up at night. <laughs> you know, I mean, and for all my life, I cannot tell you the fear of death I've had. I guess that's why I've never been oh, an adventurous person. I've never done sports which are dangerous or, you know, uh, could, could end in severe um, ending of life. Um, I've always been very careful. That's how it got into 78, right? You know, and that and the fact that I didn't, somehow I didn't get anything everybody else was getting. Now, I sit here and I worry about it, and I worry about this doctor's appointment, and I worry about what it, see, I'm at my age, 78, I'm going, what is it that's going to get me? Like, to begin with, like last night they were saying, hey, you know, guess what? The United States got this, the uh, uh, FIFA uh, uh, soccer for 2026. And I went, I don't think that's going to do me a lot of good. Like, am I going to be around in 2026? You know, now could be I'll live to be a hundred, but if my eight feet are still like, and I don't want that. On the other hand, I don't want to be dead. So anyway, I worry about this all the time, and it's a it's a constant thing, and it drives a girlfriend nuts because I'm a hypochondriac because of it, and and I I take things here here here's what I hear here's what I do. This is where I go wrong. Okay. I take things and then I elaborate on them. Okay, so now there's this PSA test, and the PSA test tells you uh, whether there's a rise in the PSA. If there's too much of a rise in the PSA, uh, uh, they, they decide that maybe they have to give you a, a biopsy to see if you've got cancer in your prostate, which is not pleasant, ask Phil. So what I do is I go, it's going to go up. They're going to give me the biopsy. The biopsy is going to come back. I've got cancer. They're then going to remove my prostate, and I know what that's all about because I asked Phil, you know. You're urinating into a bag for a week and all that. But I haven't started at point A to say, hey, oh, the P PSA came in and it didn't go up. Or the PSA came in and went up two tenths. You know, I'm already, I've already, I've, I've got my prostate being removed. Okay. And I'm a long way away from that. And I feel like such an asshole because, you know, we got people on our program. Let's face it. We don't have a young audience, okay? Uh, I guess that's because the host is so fucking old. Um, uh, and, and, and believe me, it doesn't attract a lot of people. In fact, I'm not going to be putting up the show anymore on Facebook. Fuck it. Nobody watches it anyway, and it's a waste of my time to do it. But anyway, you can get it over there on the gabnet.net. You can get the video. Uh, you can get it by going over to YouTube because it's automatically posted after we do it here like we're doing it right now. But anyway, where, what was I saying? Where was I going with that? Um, I, I am, you know, I'm like uh, 78, and I, I'm sitting here just saying, what is it that's going to get me? You know, is it the numb feet? Could that be turning into terminal numb feet? You know. Uh, but what else could get me? And I, I, I can't figure out what gets me. I go down, I do the gym every day. I did uh, 25 minutes again on the, on the cycle. I always go in and say I'm going to do 20 minutes on the cycle, and then all of a sudden I'm up to 20 minutes, and I go, well, I can go another five. And sometimes I go, I can go another five after that. I've gotten as high as 35 minutes before. I just said, you know, this is a useless exercise, okay? But... Uh, I uh, I do the I do the cycle for like 25 minutes and I'm not winded afterwards. You know I don't have any chest pains or palpitations or anything like that. 
I'm a little loopy because I've been pedaling for 25 minutes. And half the time I forget, I forget my iPhone. That's the other thing. I, I put the iPhone on the front of the, of the cycle, and then I put on like I'm watching uh, the history of Prohibition. Okay, and I'll sit there and I'll pedal away and I have something to watch while it's going on. And then when I'm through, because I've got these Bluetooth earphones, all right, the Bluetoothies, uh, <laughs> I forget the phone because I still hear it in my ear. And I'm walking around and I'm going, oh, wait a minute, where's my phone? And it's the Bluetooth is still picking up the signal from it. So and then I got to go back and hope somebody didn't steal it from the, uh, from the cycle. This is my life. Anyway, well, oh, and I, I know what I was saying. I was saying that, you know, yeah, we got people on the show. We got uh, Jeff. Jeff's had a lot of heart deals through his life. He's got, you know, he's got a lot of mechanics going on in his chest, and he's uh, he's got a great attitude about it all. Phil had his prostate removed. We have uh, uh, Patrick, who is a paraplegic. Uh, we have uh, Kevin, who has uh, bad feet that may he may have to have a foot amputated, Okay. Right? Who else? We got somebody else that's got a problem too. And me, I got numb feet. Yeah, what? You know? Oh, I got a slight uh, mild uh, aortic stenosis. Big deal. You get older, you get a mild aortic stenosis. This is like my my life is like uh, health wise. I'm in probably. Knock, hello, knock on wood, um, uh, it's, it's okay. Compared to these, a lot of these guys who've got real genuine problems, okay? Genuine problems. So uh, I feel like such an asshole even worrying about it. You know, wait till I've got something, then I can say I've got it, and we've got to have these tests, and they got to put a stent in it, and they got to do this, and they got to do that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, well, Phil's calling. Why don't I take the call anyway? I'll tell you what I do. Let me let me get rid of that. Hold hold on a second. Uh, hello, uh, Phil. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I I, I accidentally left the uh, uh, the thing open, so people. I I guess you saw that it was open, and you figured, what the fuck? I'll I'll bother him. Let me just get this all set up so that I can uh, I can go over to you. Uh, uh, here, 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 here's a guy. You were stalling for time, and you needed to show what one of your blind, crippling, crazy uh, uh, panelists look like. <laughs> yeah, you're the one with the prostate. Yeah, well, no, I, I'm not the one with the prostate. You're the one without the prostate. I'm the one without the prostate, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and look at him. He's happy. He's not worried. Are you worried about dying? Uh, not anymore. No, but I mean, when, when the thought of it occurred to you because they said you had prostate cancer and that there was always that possibility, how, how, how fear-struck were you by that? Um, I was really good about compartmentalizing the thing, uh, kind of uh, ignoring it and uh, just not letting it bother me. I, basically, there was nothing I could do except what I did. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, uh, but 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 you know, I mean, do you have a fear of death, like I do? I mean, mine's morbid. Mine is just it's it's crippling. Do you know what my biggest fear is? What is uh, uh, having all of my disorganized paperwork uh, and uh, leaving it for someone else to have to deal with? You know, do they know where the insurance policy is? Do they, you know, how do they close down the store? What about people that I've sold jobs to? I got to get them installed. You know, there were, these are the kinds of things that play on me. Uh, you know, uh, what's going to happen uh, uh, to the uh, people I love? My dog, is my dog going to know that I'm dead? Or is it going to think that I abandon it? These are the things that I was concerned about. You mean you weren't concerned about what happens uh, after you die? Uh, yeah, I was uh, concerned about what people would have to deal with. No, 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 yeah. no, no. But I'm saying that, because, like, uh, you die, okay, and now you have to look forward to nothing. That, that's easy <laughs> yeah. for me. Oh, it's easy for you. Yeah, it's what everybody else has to deal with. The tax returns, the... Uh, you know the 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 company. The, there's a, a store that's full of shit. Yeah, but that's not, that's files from look, 1984. Uh, the, the fear that I have with death that has nothing to do with any of that. Like you know who's gonna who's gonna get my porn collection? You know things like that. You know, 
uh, or, or who's going to find now. my porn collection? <laughs> uh, I, I had, you know, when I went into the operation, I have a friend that uh, was going to take care of all the guns. I had a uh, another friend that was going to take care of all the camera equipment. Uh, you know, there, there was, you know, uh, stuff so that I could get things quickly to Faye. Uh, and so you uh, had people rooting for you to die. Probably, <laughs> you know. Uh, I told her, you know, take take my watches to this place, yeah. I'll give you money. And, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. Anytime, listen, to- anytime you go in for an operation, I think Jeff will agree with me on this because God knows he, he knows medicine. Anytime mm-hmm. you go in for anything, you could probably just go in for an appendectomy. You right. could die on the table. Well, look what happened yeah. to the comedian, what's her name, uh, uh, Joan, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers, yeah. She went in for a very simple they went in right. for a, uh, they were going to go look at her throat or they were going to move some polyps or something. Yeah, it was similar to what uh, Marjorie yeah. had. Yeah. Well, she she went and had it taken care of at the same place. Well, you know, she probably thought lightning can't strike twice. Well, no, but she didn't know that was the place. And then when I pull <laughs> up to it and I go into it, uh, I'm yeah. going, wait a minute, this is the, what I can't remember what the name of the place was. I said, this is where Joan Rivers died. My I, wife's I, in I, here. I thought they had a sign in the lobby that said Joan Rivers died here. No, no. <laughs> warning, warning Joan Rivers died here. <laughs> you know, like Washington slept in, uh, slept here. Well, Joan Rivers died here. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, n- no. So anyway, I have this morbid fear of death. It's just, you know, it's horrible. And it, 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 al- it doesn't allow me to have a lot of good times. I keep thinking I should. Ch- I was thinking tonight I should just quit this whole Gabnet deal. And just enjoy my life. Go travel the world and do stuff with Marjorie and, you know, and hey. and, and not waste my time here. Because I haven't even been down past 23rd Street in a month, you know? Hey, when, when I told you that uh, almost five years ago, I said, yes, I'll be your, your the best panelist you ever had. I thought you'd have a job by now, you know? <laughs> you and me both, pal. <laughs> Yeah, I figured, all right, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that he's always got a guest. It's it's no problem. But Jesus Christ, why don't somebody hire you by now? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, I, they, they, there is nothing out there for me. They they're so, they just took a station in San Francisco and decided to make it into a left-wing talk station. Oh, which one's that? Uh, it, it, they did it once before, 910. Right, oh, but nine ten was uh, the right wing talk station. Oh, I mean, KNEW. No, but I think that's the one they're doing now. I don't know. I can't. One of those stations. One that, of the, that's part of that same group now. Uh, it's iHeart Radio. It's iHeart Radio. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but what are they doing? You know, do they say, "Hey, you know, we should get to do mornings here at this radio station." Alex Bennett. I hear he's not working, and he's big. You know, he was big in this town. And, and uh, he's a left winger. He's a left winger, so he'll fit the, the the profile of the station. That's the guy we should hire. No, you know what they're doing? It's all syndicated. It's Stephanie fucking Meyer and Tom Hartman, the gold seller, and uh, uh, you know all these assholes, right? Uh, and and uh, my friend Walter, who you saw here, uh, yeah. he's going to be on that station because they're carrying his Sunday night program on that station yeah. and he wrote the program director and said you know who you should hire and he wrote a whole big thing about me he never got a letter back huh. because the guy who's running the radio station never doesn't have a, an idea of the history of san francisco radio and what worked and what didn't work and so on and and they don't want to hire a, a a live personality they got to pay money to you know so i'm i'm not working ever again. you could do the show from new york oh i would do it from new york yeah, yeah, I would do it from New York. I, in fact, I'd, I'd sell them on the Citizen Panel idea. And I, uh, what I would do is I would pre-record it here with you guys. Yeah, you know, and tell you when to call and so on and so forth. And then I would, uh, I, I, w- I would give them literally a recording, not a live, uh, not a live broadcast, so that if there were any problems, like four-letter words that happened, I could edit them first and. And, yeah. uh, you know, I could break the thing. We could do a stream of programming, and then I could chop it up into sections so they could do commercial breaks. Yeah. That would probably be the way I'd do it. But uh, don't even talk about it. It's not going to happen, you know. Did you did you ever consider, like, offering it for them for a month for free? Uh, I'll offer it to them for two three months for free, you know. But 
Uh, what about the, the guy from Talkers? Can't he? Uh, uh, he doesn't help me anymore. No? No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want me to ask Barry to ask him? No. No. No, 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 no. No, no, please. No. All right. No, I can call. I can call him. I can talk to him. I can write him. But sometimes he doesn't write me back, or he doesn't phone me back. You know, so I, 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 I don't need that. You know. Yeah. Uh, I got enough disappointments in life. <laughs> you know, um, Dennis Hoff, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch guy. Yeah. Uh, just uh, won a primary uh, to run for the state legislature from his county, and his county always votes. For always uh, elects the Republican. And guess what? It turns out he's a Trump Republican. Aha! <laughs> you, you know, I, 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 what do you do? You know, I mean, I have... We're no, everywhere. I, no, I have no respect for the guy anymore. I know, we're everywhere. You no, know, no, you're <laughs> different. For some reason, you're different. I don't know why, okay? <laughs> uh, but... Uh, he smiles. No, but I mean, Dennis, Dennis throws in with, with Trump, you know. So people do disappoint me, okay? And I've learned that in life. And I think Jeff probably has learned the same lesson. If people disappoint you, well, that's par for the course. If they don't, be surprised, you know, and, and, and cherish them, you know. But when, when people do the – so many people do the wrong thing. that When people do the right thing, you know, you cherish them. <laughs> just cherish them like Phil Phil would do the right thing Phil's a good guy that way thank you what <laughs> I saw today though was an act of kindness that was wonderful better than my than me actually there was this old little old lady she was in the she was right in front of me at the supermarket and she bought some or had some uh, styrofoam cups. I think she either bought them there or she bought them somewhere else. I guess she needed them. She, and, and she was leaving. It was a very windy day here. And the wind gust came up and blew the styrofoam cups out of her, out of her uh, cart. Mm -hmm. And they flew into the street. And she's, she couldn't chase them. She was really old, you know. And so immediately this young girl went after a bunch of them. And they kept moving down the street. I mean, they were going pretty fast, but she chased after them for, for this woman. And there were a bunch that were closer to me, and I went over and grabbed those for her and brought them back to her. But this woman who took the time out to just help somebody she never knew in her life, you know, because they had lost this thing, it was wonderful. It was just wonderful. Gee, you've got a you got a you got a light coming through on oh, your face that's from the um, uh, from the curtains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's still light out here, it'll, it'll, and uh, yeah. you know the, the, these are vertical blinds, and they're not uh, what I would have chosen. And yeah. uh, I don't think the apartment complex would like me uh, changing them to. Uh, yeah, but you, that never things. usually happens, though. We don't usually uh, get that on your face. It's well. It's because the uh, sun is is still up. You know, it's it, seven. It looks something. like God's lining you up for an MRI or something. Yeah, like I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I uh, saw an article today that mm -hmm. uh, in Brooklyn and in Harlem they're having a rat problem. Uh, that uh, that the, the, Jeff, did you see that? Uh, that uh, no, I didn't. And uh, my son lives in Brooklyn, so I was curious about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's always been plenty of rats. Well, there've been yeah. rats, you yeah, know, rats and mice. Uh, but it's but it's Harlem and Brooklyn were uh, 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 talked about as being the heavy rat population area. You know. Wow. Hello, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, yeah no. Too many rats, not enough cats. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, here's what happened. Can I tell rats, you? Not rats. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? They, we, I guess, used to have rats in the basement of this apartment building. Yeah. And so what the apartment building did was go out and get cats mm -hmm. and put them in the basement. And uh, every now and then, of course, it was rutting season. And you, do you know what cat sperm smells like? It's gas. No, it's gas. He is terrible. No, it with. isn't cat pee. It is, it's not. You're mixing up the cat pee with the fact that they're actually spraying uh, to mark their territory and they're spraying sperm. Wow. Well, 
there's a certain season around here where the elevator is just you, you gag. Yeah. You're trapped you know, in that for eight floors. Because what huh? happened was they got a couple of cats. And those cats fucked, and they had a couple of cats, and those cats fucked. And before you knew it, there were 20 feral cats in the goddamn, you know. So all I can think of is like a Warner Brothers cartoon where this happens, and so they then go out and get the dogs to chase the cats. And now there's so many dogs there, they had to get mountain lions to go chase the dogs, you know. It's, it was, you know. But, but I've never seen a rat. I saw one mouse here. And oddly enough, yes, ladies and gentlemen, when I first moved in, I saw a squirrel. a squirrel. I'm sitting in the kitchen, and the kitchen looks out on the dining room. And I'm right. looking, I look, I see something. Earlier in the day, I had seen something out of the side of my eye in the back room, but I didn't know what it was. I, I thought it was just me. You know, sometimes you think you see stuff and you don't. And all of a sudden, I look over, and there's a fucking squirrel standing there looking at me. Got lost from the park? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like uh, what, uh, uh, six blocks from the park? Yeah. You know, so he probably wasn't lost. He just did whatever he did. And then he climbed up the building. Talk about that raccoon. You saw the raccoon viral yeah, video, yeah. right? That's what this uh, squirrel had to do. And so I, then I go over and I go, get out of here. And the squirrel's just fucking looking at me. You know Why? What? The squirrel said, you're not paying rent either. No, no, this is when I was paying rent. And he didn't know that either. So, so finally, I started clapping my hands, and I chased him out the window. And I figured he probably, he'll, he'll probably commit suicide now, you know. But no. Hey, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, cups for some old lady, but the poor squirrel well, well, uh, well, is down eight stories. This is not the end of the story. Uh, so I yeah. chase him out the window, and he, of course, I guess they, they can climb up the side of buildings, right? Just like that raccoon did. People thought that was amazing. No, it wasn't amazing. They can do it, okay? Uh, about a day later, two days later, new, on the news, at the CVS pharmacy down the street, they had a, ra a, a raccoon running around the CVS. And I knew it was the same fucking raccoon. It had to be the same raccoon. Squirrel? A, a squirrel, 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 excuse yeah. me, squirrel. It had to be the same squirrel. So um, uh, I uh, now I'm like a big, uh, you know, big fan of, of squirrels. How was it dressed and were you able to describe it? No, but, but I'm sure it was the same squirrel. I mean, what are the chances, you know? He probably worked his way down the street and then he saw the CVS and maybe he needed some earplugs or something and he went in, you know. A secret squirrel. A secret squirrel, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, so that was my, that's my, my, but so when you talk about rodents, I guess a squirrel is a rodent, you know, and that was the biggest rodent, but I had one mouse we saw and uh, then Ma Marjorie put down all these mouse traps and I think we caught one more uh, or we caught that one. It was terrible. I had her take care of it. I said, you know, I don't want, I don't know these, the trouble with the glue traps are. Yeah, they catch the mice, but then they're suffering, and they're, it's tragic. It's horrible, you know? And they catch other things, too, and the stuff you don't want to catch. Yeah. The, uh, the, but mice are small, you know, and, and rats, I think, uh, get much larger than yeah. mice. Yeah, but yeah. We, I don't think we have a rat problem in this building at all. Plus, we, they have exterminators that come in. And since they're trying to rent some of these apartments for $7,000 a month here, I think they don't want the idea that there are rats in the fucking apartment house. Wow. You know. Uh, seven grand a month for what size? Small, like yours? Smaller than mine. Wow. Yeah. That, why do you think we're fighting for this one for like 15? We want, we want, we feel the accurate rent right now for us is $1,500 a month. And that's probably what we'll get if they go purely by. Uh, the uh, rain st rent stabilization, you know, and there've been no improvements made on this apartment, so they can't claim. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. any any news? Uh, no, when, uh, no, no. We went no. to court last. Uh, last time I remember being in that courtroom was what February, yeah. and the judge said she would take uh, certain things under advisement. This was just on a motion that they wanted to have uh, uh, somebody to help them out. You know, uh, they want some help. Uh, uh, he he, want, he wanted his case. The guy who rented the apartment to us wanted his case to be 
uh, adjudicated and wanted relief and wanted it immediately to be the judge to go to his side. So the judge has been taking months and months and months to come to a decision and hasn't yet. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it just goes on and on and on and on. Waive your right to a speedy trial? What? No, I, uh, yeah, you, we waived our right to a speedy trial. No, you know, I, I just figured by, by now we would see some kind of movement one way or the other. And this is an argument about the, 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 the guy who rented the apartment. It's basically he wants re relief, injunctive relief or whatever, that the judge should immediately rule in his favor because this is the reasons why. And, of course, then my guy had to write a $12,000 document saying all the reasons why not, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got a pretty good case. They may, they may, she may immediately go against the, uh, the landlords because they're, I think, guilty of sin of a lot of stuff. But even, even these two lawyers both agreed that, the only, that in the end the people who would have to be accommodated would be us. How come they just don't offer to settle? And uh, just leave you in the place. The guy walks away, and he's uh, he's done. I know? don't know. Landlord you know, it's it's intent. nobody. I guess it's because nobody's giving up. I think it's because the landlord has an attitude, much like Donald Trump's, that you don't let somebody sue you. You just uh, you don't you you know you just fight it, fight it, fight it. You hope that if you fight it long enough, uh, they'll run out of money. Right. You know that's the way they look at it. So you know. Uh, but but it goes on and on and on and on. Hello, SG. How are you? SG, hey. can we see your face? You Come on. Last time we saw you like this, and it was, you know, <laughs> it was like Kilroy was here. You know, there we yeah. go. There he, he is. Well, uh, now Scott's got to do the. <laughs> oh, Scott. Get, cut it out, Scott. Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Anyway, uh, how are you, SG? How are you doing? Good. Yeah, yeah. Come to come to raise a rumpus tonight. I'm I'm just kumbaya. Kumbaya. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, SG, what do you think of the IG? <laughs> uh, that's kind of lame. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 I mean, it does show that uh, Comey was. Comey's a pussy. Come on. Uh, uh, you know, I... I, I mean, he's... Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Comey, on one side, does one thing for the Dems, and then one thing for the Republicans. So he, he is in himself... You know, everyone hates this guy. Yeah, I, I, you're, you're absolutely I right. Uh, I mean, I, I think that the... Uh, certainly the Hillary lovers hate him. Just hated him. And the only thing they liked him about was that he you know, got fired by Trump and now he became a sympathetic character. But and the then fact everything, is, everyone said, you know, day one, Trump, fire him. And he sort of, you know, I'm not sure about any of this stuff, but Comey was like the emperor. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, I was so innocent because I did everything right. It's bullshit. Well, I, th I think Comey had a lot of problems. Uh, uh, and and I got to remind every liberal out there listening here: when he fucked over Hillary, remember how you how much you hated him? Yeah, exactly. You know, so let's not all of a sudden love the guy. There's, know. You know, there's exactly. nothing to love. But anybody who thinks that this, you know, and and uh, the the, the uh, White House would love to paint this as hello Ray Renati, the White House would love to paint this as a vindictive uh, a vindication of. Uh, of um, uh, Donald Trump, but in the Russia probe, but it has nothing to do with the Russia probe, you know. Uh, it just shows the uh, uh, there was some unfair treatment, and that there were some people in the FBI. Two, had, two, two to be exact. Yes, fucking lame. Okay, uh, uh, there were exactly two of them, uh, and but that that doesn't it doesn't paint anything. In fact, uh, somebody wrote here. Uh, though the inspector general condemned the individual FBI officials, uh, this is from the Washington Post, the report right. fell significantly short in supporting the assertion by the president and his allies that the investigation was rigged in favor of Clinton. Isn't so, the Washington Post owned by Pravda? No. No, it's actually it's owned by uh, Amazon. Yeah, what's the name? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, Amazon. But, uh, you know. Well, they, they get their news from Pravda. Instead of AP, they use Pravda. Yeah, and the nice thing about the Washington Post, because they're owned by Amazon now, you get next day delivery. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you have something like Strzok and his uh, big-gummed lover, I mean, you will never see or you will never know all the stuff that went behind the scenes. And they're not going to find this out. But, you know... Those people are obviously well, look, prejudiced. Well, look, obviously prejudiced. No, those those people those people deficit. those people obviously had were prejudiced and they were stupid to write texts about it. I, I you know I honestly believe that everybody has an opinion about just about everything, and you can't expect that just because uh, they're with the FBI they don't have an opinion too. It's when they take that opinion and activate it and try and make things come out the way they want them to come out. Well, that the it's a problem. report said that, uh, that they don't feel that their opinion uh, uh, changed their outcome. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I was listening to some guy on NRA TV, and uh, he said that... You Is that know, where you get I your think, news from, NRA TV? I like that. I like that channel. Uh, so uh, the, the guy said, you know, I know a Do lot of... Do you watch the Dana Loesch show? Uh, I'm not sure. sure. Uh, this was uh, the Galoob, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, women in, uh, in, in guns. Uh, well, anyway. Oh, you like uh, to watch the Women with Guns show? Yeah. Oh, okay. Big guns. That's what we like, big guns. Uh, yeah, big guns. Big guns shooting big guns, yeah. Yeah. So we we'll have two big this, guns. This one, guy, this one guy says, hey, I know a lot of cops that have a lot of opinions, but at the end of the day, they do their job. And uh, you know, no, and no matter how they may privately feel, you know, when they're uh, they're actually performing their job, they're professionals. Well, you can't expect you can't, you, you can't expect people to be devoid of opinions. I mean, yeah. personally, you can expect that they, in being professionals and uh, being given to a task, uh, adjudicate that task with uh, with uh, an open mind and and don't try and balance things one way or the other. I think these two people, even though in spite of the way the, the, the texts were worded, there was no evidence that they ever did anything to fuck up no, that's Trump. Their, that's their form of sexting each other. Yeah. So? Well, if they marry, <laughs> lucky it's them. Like, it's like middle school people. Just That's how you sext each other. Yeah. And uh, then well, they go home and, you know, fish like, nets and all that I stuff. I will let it happen. <laughs> were these texts? Be, uh, yeah, these were texts. Yeah, yeah, because you can do as long a thing as you want to with texts. But I think it was on their uh, uh, issued devices. It wasn't on their personal phones. Really? Yeah. Well, it was it it, it it was a bad judgment on their part. But these are two people in the FBI. How many people are in the FBI? <laughs> you know, I mean, more than two. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't like this came out as a smoking gun. It was it was a condemnation of Comey, but not a complete condemnation, saying that in the end he had done nothing wrong. You know, did you, he had handled no, did it wrong, hear, but he did nothing wrong. Did you hear that Comey was using his personal email for uh, for public business while he was investigating uh, Hillary for using her personal uh, phones and email for? Well, I, I, I've got news for you. The guy who complained most about Hillary's emails was, of course, Donald Trump, who, while he's been in the White House, uses his iPhone. He calls yeah. with his iPhone. He has not got a secured line. I don't understand. He doesn't send uh, uh, email. No, he doesn't send email. That's true. But but he does have a phone, and that can be compromised. Yes, Ray. He, he was told not to use the iPhone right from the beginning because it's not secure and he, he just won't do it. And I heard that um, a number of people in, in government and Congress use their own servers because the White House uh, server in the IS department is just a complete mess and yeah. you can't get anything done. So people just use their own servers. Yeah. I, I mean, what Hillary did is like... I don't even think she was really that well, aware. Well, he, here's of the interesting on. thing. If you remember the, 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 the whole the whole flap with Comey and the reason why <clears throat> he said they were investigating uh, some text, uh, and it was on uh, what's his name's uh, 
phone. Uh, oh, it's, uh, they, uh, the the uh, the guy who got arrested for pornography. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh God! All of a sudden, what's his name's husband? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the thing was, Wiener. Wiener. Wiener Anthony That's Wiener. A, but, Anthony but the thing Wiener. was that Comey, and this is truth, did not know that he was married to Huma Abedin. I knew that. I knew that. He didn't know it. Oh my God! You know, and, and, and the hell has he got his head to fan? Yeah. So, uh, but that there were some. <laughs> they, they wanted to see some if there were any compromised uh, because I think he was using. Yes, I think he was using the Clinton server. So that's why they wanted his records. But he didn't know he was married to Huma Abedin. Huma Abedin supposedly uh, copied those emails to that laptop for her own use. Yeah. And it just so happened to be on that laptop yeah. and that laptop belonged to Wiener. Yeah. Uh, you know, the worst the Clintons could be accused of in that particular case was bad judgment and not really knowing uh, tech that well to you know how to keep yourself covered. Oh, yeah. That Hillary Clinton was advised sure. not to uh, to use that server uh, and, uh, and no. to by and whom? For her no, personal email. No, it's not true. Uh, by, by whom? Staff. By, by whom? Staff. By who? Her staff was the one who was administering it. Right, but it was She her didn't know shit about she it. She got just, the she can't, from Colin Powell. She, she, can, she can barely write an email. I believe. She's a complete Luddite. I believe when it came to, when it came to the state, wait a minute, when it came to State Department stuff, she yeah. used the State Department servers for mail. She did not use her private server for mail. So that's what a lot of people were worried about, all the secrets of state and blah, 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 blah. No, uh, it was her stuff like, uh, you know, uh, hey, Bill, will you pick up some uh, some bread at the store before you come home? You know, crap like that. You know, I, I, I'd hate to be the guy who had to look through all those 30,000 emails because you got to know that 29,998 of them were just boring as shit. <laughs> they were probably mostly about uh, Hillary telling Bill, stop looking at that girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, the um, um, a couple of things uh, also today. Uh, the Russians have a new piece of propaganda. Uh, not the Russians. The North Koreans have a piece of a new piece of propaganda they're using. I'm sure you've all seen it, haven't you? Salute. Dennis uh, Rodman. The, 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 the salute that uh, they have a video of him I meeting miss. all these North Koreans, and then all of a sudden he meets that North Korean general. Boy, they have loose-fitting outfits. They don't look, looks like they're too big for them. I, I think it was uh, just uh, an, an impulsive well, wait, 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 well, I th I think it was too. Oh, I see. But it didn't look. The optics did not look good when he goes up and the guy, the general, salutes him, which yeah. I guess would be appropriate because he's a he's a you know a foreign dignitary. A uh, and and uh, then yeah, no, then that, Trump that, that, and that, that, was, that was bad. That, he didn't bow to him though. Yeah, tr tr Trump. Uh, return the salute, and then he shook his hand. He what he what he should have done was just shake his hand. What's yeah. the definition of salute? Basically, no. Basically, it was a, it was a salute. It was a salute, but I know why he did it because it was the yeah. same salute he gives the guys when he's coming down off the plane. You know, right. he, he it's just like somebody did that. I got to do that back, and then he. But, do you know? Do you know why? Uh, I I I don't remember what the movie. Oh. Was. That, that I saw, I think it was the uh, the Citadel or something, uh, where uh, the guy was in prison and he explained uh, the uh, the salute. He was a general, uh, and uh, I, I think it was called the Citadel or the Castle, and uh, and it seems that in ancient times uh, they would salute one another to show that they weren't armed and that they were uh, friendly. Uh, and and that's no. that's where the basis no. of the salute. But did you see no. the clip that I sent you, no. Alex? I just watched the salute. So uh, here's what yes. happened. Did uh, you Trump see the clip that I sent well, you? Well, I, I saw the clip earlier today on television too. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you Trump. if you see it, they the, he the the one that they're passing around North Korea right now. Yeah. And making a joke out of it is that he goes to 
uh, what is it? He goes to Strange. shake his okay. hand. It, this was, it was, by the way, hand. it was this, this general. And then he salutes, yeah. and then he goes to shake his hand. It, this well, was, I just watched it. So Trump goes in to, for the handshake. The other yeah. guy didn't handshake. He didn't he put salute. his hand out. He salutes, and then Trump yeah. quickly salutes, and then yeah. they shook hands. Yeah, now, the wait a minute. When he Chinese salutes, when he salutes, Koreans free. in the background going, ha, <laughs> Yeah, look. No, wait a minute. Hey, Alex, Alex. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Alex. Yes. I just saluted you. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. So, I'm a, you I'm, a li- I'm a liberal now. I'm a liberal now. Well, uh, I learned how to salute when I was in the service. So, you know, I, I, I know how to do that. Yeah. But uh, the point sure. was, the point was that if you look at that video, at the precise moment that he's saluting, look at the look on on uh, Kim Jong Un's face. He's smiling, a big grin. He always yeah. smiles. No, no, but at that, he up to that point, he was dead serious. He's grin, they always smile. Oh and yeah, yeah. To, he listen laughs. To the audio. Listen to the audio, though. Yeah. Oh, I didn't That's hear that. They're passing around the country right now. Yeah, the audio went something like this. Exactly. <laughs> Racist. Yeah, yeah. Not that I can understand what they're saying. Like no wonder they want to bomb us. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what? At least, at least he didn't bow like Obama did. To, uh, Look at stupid orange man shaking hands and saluting. Oh, oh. who, did, who did Obama bow to? It was one of Well, the, that was a Saudi, Saudi, uh, Saudi uh, uh, yeah. king. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and yeah. he gave him a bad At time for doing the soldier then bowed to a Saudi king. Yeah, so he always said, "Oh, he bowed to a Saudi king. He bowed, he bowed, he bowed to the and he saluted uh, You're this." Supposed uh, to practice that shit beforehand. By the I way, used the guy to meet all those people the from guy, overseas. They always told me this shit ahead of time. The guy, yeah, the, the guy, wait a minute, hold on a second. The guy always hand him the, the your business card with it pointing face towards them. With the card out so that they can read the card with two hands. You always hand it to them like that. They used to tell us that shit all the time, ahead of time, so you don't offend them. Right, but here's the thing. Uh, it, it was, uh, um, uh, it, 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 oh, he always put down uh, uh, Obama for having bowed to the Saudi prince, and now this guy, now the guy he was saluting, was the guy who was in the White House a couple of weeks ago? He he's uh, he was like he's like Mao's uh, Kim Jong Un's second in command, uh, and, and in charge of all the murders, by the way. Uh, and uh, 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 so, but he was up in full rig there for that opportunity. So, but what you didn't hear was when he said, "Yeah, motherfucker." <laughs> uh, yeah, right. True. Yeah. 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 Tr- Remember when Bush massa- uh, massaged the German lady? <laughs> and he came up behind her. And, like, yeah, yeah. Her and, Angela Merkel. Yeah, yeah. I remember she when, was pissed. Oh, when Bush yeah. threw up over uh, on t- uh, at somebody. Uh, was it? Oh yeah, Japanese yeah. guy. Yeah. The, guy. Bush threw one up. threw up on the Japanese emperor. Or something. So what's yeah. worse, throwing up on the emperor or saluting some general? He blew chunk. Yeah. Blowing, the, blowing chunks. That was hilarious. That was. I still the, remember that. Oh my god. Uh, Bad sushi. Yeah, that was the. SHW, who, I, always, I, who also grabbed women's ass. And said yeah. when, from his uh, wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you're at the well, right hey, height. Hey. You know. What, yeah. what, he's free what? now. He can do whatever he wants. Yep. Yep. He, he's 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 available, girls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> remember when? Remember when Kennedy stooped Marilyn Monroe? Not really. Remember what? <laughs> well, no. He not only. I don't, I don't wait, minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He I'm he saying, not only stooped. Very presidential. He not uh, only stooped Marilyn. Got, if you got Marilyn Monroe, yeah. I I'm all for it. He not <laughs> he not only stooped Marilyn Monroe. So did Bobby. They were tag teaming her. You know. Yeah. yeah. All the family. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna start voting re- uh, Democrat. Yeah, it's uh, well. Marilyn's gone. Oh, who's yeah. out there now? Amy Schumer? Oh God! <laughs> oh gee, oh. she gained too much weight. <laughs> yeah. Chelsea uh, Handler or Chandler? What oh, no, what's what's her name? Well, as I said uh, last Sarah. night, as I said last night, you know, it's proving. You know, they used to say about Hitler that even Hitler had a girlfriend. You know, <laughs> uh, 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 to prove that point, even Rudy Giuliani has a girlfriend. Uh, and it's I a new one. It's a new one. She's got big, big, large bazooms. Okay. Yeah. If uh, go ahead, call me improper with that bazoom remark. All right, you're improper. Okay, I'm improper. Bazookas, <clears throat> bazookas, bazooms. 
tatas, whatever you want to call them. And and I, but uh, I, and I said last night that I can't imagine, you know, uh, how she manages to open mouth kiss him without throwing up in his mouth. <laughs> you think uh, Ava Braun started that razor company? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Braun razors. Uh, Where did that come from? Well, you know, I was thinking <laughs> it was Hitler's girlfriend. Of simpletons. <laughs> but even Hitler had a girlfriend. You know, yeah. even, even Hitler yeah. got laid. Although I hear he had problems that way. I hear he had. I mean, I don't know. Did he have um, uh, one testicle? No, he had one he testicle. Had yeah, we that we do know he did have one testicle. Uh, what was the but thing that uh, that gangster from Chicago? <laughs> What? Uh, who died in Sing Sing? The gangster from Chicago. Oh, Al Capone died, died of Al syphilis. Capone. He died of syphilis. Syphilis. Did uh, did Hitler have syphilis? No. no. What did Hitler have? He had something. He that, had a bullet uh, in the head. Insanity. Or in the a mouth. The head. <laughs> no, okay. Well, I thought he had something like that. Here's what yeah. I'm wondering. You're yeah. you're in the bunker, you know, and now you're with Eva, and and you've decided on a suicide pact. Yeah. And now you say, well, who goes first? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. When you're Hitler. because I don't know that I. She, she went first, by the way. She took a capsule, you know, and then he shot himself. But how does she know that he didn't go? Oh fuck it! I'm not killing myself. I'll I'll go on trial or whatever. You know, because he was an honest man. No, but with suicide pacts, how do you really know you can trust the other person to do it as well? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I ne girlfriend says, you know, I think we should just have a, have a suicide pact for like when we hit 83, we'll do it, you know. And and I said, I said, yeah, you go first. <laughs> you know, Put your heads in the oven with the gas on. Do you know that? Uh, that sounds like a bit from Bob, Bill Cosby. Hats and heads in the oven with the lamp. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it says here. That an encounter with a Jewish prostitute in Vienna in 1908 may have given Hitler uh, neurosyphilis. Yeah. And, uh, provided the de deadly logic blueprint for the Holocaust. Huh? No, okay. uh, the, the Holocaust blueprint came from years of, of writing by people that he just absorbed and, and went along with. I don't, the, what happens is with syphilis, folks, doctor is in, with syphilis, um, uh, syphilis is a, a weird disease because you get it, you catch it, and then you know nothing happens for about 20 years, and then one morning you wake up and your arm falls off. It's just it's it's an insidious disease, and a lot of people don't know they have it. Okay, yeah. uh, and one of the one of the side effects, one of the diseases you can have as a result of syphilis is paresis, which is a brain situation, right. and you go crazy. And yes, that could be a good argument. Uh, yeah, he devoted 13 pages to uh, the disease in Mein Kampf and uh, combating syphilis. And uh, syphilis, hmm. he says, the Jewish disease. And, <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's possible that Trump has syphilis? Uh, well, he, you know, he's banged enough uh, uh, Playboy Porn. bunnies and, uh, yeah. and and porno stars. But they're the clean ones, Alex says. <laughs> you know. Yeah, actually, porn stars are cleaner than I, I would take a chance with a porn star before I'd ever take a chance with a with, some, with an average person out on the street. You know, yeah. uh, mainly because they get tested all the time. You know, and they they they're very aware of this because this is their livelihood. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. You know, so when he did Stormy Daniels, he he didn't need a condom. Okay. <laughs> I saw her recently. I saw her recently. She's horrible. She she's is. like this giant chunk. Yeah, you know, she is. I mean, she's not. She's not my idea of a good time. All right. No. You know, no. I I, I uh, downloaded one of her porn films to see. You know, it, what why she was so big, and I think basically she was big because she was a self promoter, because I don't think she was big because she was cute and adorable. So who is your type? Did you, right now. Did you have to now, pay for that? Who's, who's, your type? who's my type? Yeah, you said Stormy's not your type. Who's your type? Uh, he likes uh, Zoftic, uh dark haired women. N not Zoftic. Uh, well, uh, short, uh, kind of like. I wouldn't call short? him Zoftic. 
Yeah. Short What's your name? Uh, 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 midget? Okay, yeah. okay. I would have fucked Monica Lewinsky. What? No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought she was cute, too. I don't know why people said she wasn't. He just wanted to fuck the boss's daughter. No, no, no. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. She, to begin with, uh, she's the kind of girl that would have said yes to me in high school. Okay? Because she had low self-esteem. Okay? And, and that appeals to me. A woman with low self-esteem always big thing with me. What about the uh, actress that you liked? Uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, uh, Linda Blair. Yeah, Linda Blair. Yeah, I went oh, on. How about, how about this? How about I went on. I went on a. I went on a. The women from uh, politics, the women on CNN versus Fox. Well, let, let's get into that in a second. But let me tell you about Linda Blair. I just, I, I, I had, had a, a thing for her, so I made a big deal about it. You know, everybody was talking about what are your guilty pleasures, and I said Linda Blair, and this got back to her, and she came to New York and. We went out on a date as a, as a joke. We got to like each other, and I've seen her in recent years, and uh, she always was very, very nice to me. And uh, perhaps if I wanted to take it further, I could have, you know. Did her head twist around? See, I knew you were going to say that. There's always a question. Everybody asks when I says I went out on a date with Linda Blair. Uh, Those are cans. She hey. was a real head turner. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, Alex, Alex what's up, what? One time I went to an audition over at Nancy Hayes casting, yeah. and she said to me, because you, you were doing that thing once on where you were doing the interviews, and then you had the AOL thing, and, and you had interviewed her, and she says, I thought he was going to ask me out. I was kind of disappointed. This is what she said to me. Who, Nancy Hayes? Yeah. Oh. Because I kind of liked him. I don't understand why well, he didn't call well, me back. Well, because she never came on to me. You know, you got to send up a flare before I know you're interested. You know, I'm I'm very naive. I mean, a woman could sit there, flash herself, and I'd go, "Oh, your your bra is showing." You know, I mean, as, you go the Statue of Liberty, huh? Because she's holding a torch. Is that why you like the Statue of so, Liberty? Because she's holding a torch. Yeah, yeah. I can look up her dress. Anyway, uh, it, but, but I gotta say, it it, it, it it I didn't know that about Nancy. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I swear to God. I, swear I, to God. I, I, she, but apparently, she didn't like me that much because I went for a couple of auditions and I never got the part. You know, well, she's ready to burn his figure. She for doesn't. Ca she just brings you in. It's what, the producer. What that is that? What, what is that light for? What is that? Uh, it's SG. I'm, I'm, giving you the, the I'm giving you the signal. What's oh, yeah. <laughs> He likes you. He's in love. Yeah. With him. I'm uh -oh. Giving you the signal. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Oh well, God. You know, we haven't gotten that yeah. technically proficient on the internet yet. Where you where you can blow me from there. So you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have an app for that. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, I want, I want to tell you, you know, uh, Me Too goes, sometimes goes a little far, all right? And this one came through today, and I, uh, when I read it, I just went, what? Now, on the surface of it, it's an interesting story. Oscar-winning actor Jamie Foxx is hmm. vehemently denying an allegation from a woman who says... He slapped her in the face with his penis. <laughs> Fox I, reportedly called the allegation an absurd lie. You know, I, I don't know oh, about oh, I I, 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 the, the stories I've heard about black men. I mean, it could have been dangerous. He could have knocked her out, you know. Uh, yeah. but, he, but anyway, she alleged it took place in 2002 and didn't report it till about a week ago to the New York Police Department, who said there's kind of a three-year statute of limitations on that sort of thing. <laughs> now, is she having financial trouble? Have they looked into her background? Uh, you know, no, is she doing, no. or is she doing this for publicity? TMZ reports the accuser tells us after an alleged assault. One of Jamie's friends told her she had to get out of the house. She claimed she went to the hospital the next day when she got back home to L.A. to get treatment for severe panic attack. Uh, he must have some snake. Yeah. T oh, TMZ you know he does. notes that Fox intends to take legal action against the accuser. Good. Yeah. The report quotes Fox's attorney saying, uh, Allison Hart of Lavely and Singer saying, Jamie emphatically denies that this incident ever occurred and he'll be filing a report with the Las Vegas Police Department 
it was Las Vegas, Las Vegas Police Department against a woman for filing a false police report against him. Now, she wait, it happened in 2002, and she didn't report it till about two weeks ago, something like that. You know, what, is she an idiot? Is she a yeah. moron? <laughs> How would you slap somebody in your? How would you do that anyway? I'm trying to figure well, out well, the mechanics. I, I, I don't want to brag, but I, I find I find it quite easy. But uh, <laughs> wait, wait. I think I, I think, Jack, I think Jack's in. trying to call in. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Jack could tell us. Uh, Jack would know how to yeah, done. but uh, you know, this is really uh, that, that's that's. That's my great well, who was story it again? of the day. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Oh, Jamie Foxx. I thought he said um, Red Foxx. <laughs> well, that would be doubly wrong because he's dead. Uh, the woman on CBS uh, in the morning, uh, the, the one that wears the wigs and the glasses, uh, she, the, uh, she said that, uh, that there needs to be uh, uh, a, a, a... There needs to be... Uh, People need to not just be called out on this Me Too thing that they've gone too far, that they need to uh, uh, go to court uh, like they did with Bill Cosby and so forth. They need to present look, evidence, you know. Yeah, uh, look, look at Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose, they, they scooted him out of that show uh, that she was on very, very quickly. And uh, well, Bloomberg, you know, Bloomberg, also Bloomberg, Bloomberg also dropped him his show, Charlie Rose interview show. Yeah. And Bloomberg was his biggest um, uh, supporter. supporter because he allowed him to use that studio for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Rose retained the rights to all the interviews. Uh, but the fact was that Charlie Rose has not been taken to court. Kevin Spacey has not been taken to court. Um, um, uh, Your L the CK, the Louis that Louis C.K. C.K. has not been taken Matt to Lauer. court. Matt Lauer hasn't been taken to court. None of these people, they, in other words, the assumption was made they were guilty, but there was no proof offered that they were. Right. You know, they, they made the big mistake by, by saying, well, I may have done something improper. And so some people say, well, he admitted it, you know. Uh, my advice to any guy who gets accused of this, even if you're guilty of it, and if you are, you should be ashamed of yourself, but even if you're guilty of it, is do not apologize to anybody because that's going to come back to bite you in the ass. Weinstein took your, took your advice. How did it help him? What do you mean? What advice? Well, he hasn't admitted. He says he didn't do anything. He, 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 so that wasn't he still says he hasn't, and, and he has it hasn't been proven yet. And I'll bet you they arrested him. It, it, so they arrested him. That 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 doesn't really indicting him. They that's the, but he, when it goes to trial, that dude, his that dude is guilty as hell. I, well, no, but what I'm saying is I think he's got good enough lawyers. He may walk on this stuff because sure. the argument can is always going to be proffered. They did this willingly uh, because they thought they were going to get a job, and so it was not non-consensual yeah it was no different than you know and, and 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 good lawyering can get him out of it but what i'm saying is all these people whose careers have been completely sidetracked um there's just no there hasn't been no proof put it forward uh, no court of law to show that this person did that and how come uh, bill cosby uh got convicted what did he have 1-800 lawyer Oh, but he was drugging people. He, 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 here was the trouble. Here was the trouble with Cosby. Remember, the first time it was a hung jury. Yeah. The second time was after the Me Too movement started, and so it was harder to impanel a jury who wasn't going to suddenly go. We oh, got to get the Jello guy. You know. Now, <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to defend these people, folks. If you're listening, I'm not trying to defend any of them. I'm just saying that these people have lost their livelihood. They've lost their life's work. They're not able to get jobs. And the reason is because they've been accused, not because they did anything. And many of them said, I didn't do anything. They're guilty. You know, well, but but you can't, you know. Guilty. But how, what kind of an American are you, SG? Oh, Cosby is guilty. Well, well, yes, he's guilty. He was found guilty. guilty. But I'm well, saying. Yeah, you still go back. You still Why go back to the. Is Kevin Spacey guilty? guilty. Is Pe Kevin Spacey guilty? I don't think he did anything. I didn't oh, I think, he, I think he did. I, I, I hear. Guilty, I, I, and and Cosby's guilty. They're guilty. Yeah, but Weinstein, you can't say he's guilty until they prove him guilty. 
He's guilty. No, that's what she said. You can't say that. <laughs> that's the this word is... I was looking for. She said that these people should have due process before they're uh, convicted in the court yes. of public opinion. Uh, well, yes, but you can't stop the court of public opinion, unfortunately. Especially, couch, ca- especially with Twitter been, and Facebook and all that in, shit. In, in yeah. Couch casting has been something yeah. in this industry for years, and he's banging chicks, and he's guilty. Yeah, uh, uh, guilty. Uh, Kevin. Kevin. So you look at that. So you use that. Use that theory against the uh, the Billy Bush and uh, the Donald Trump. Use right. That same theory. Billy yeah. Bush's career was sidelined not because of something he said, but because of was, something Donald Trump said and him not intervening and saying you shouldn't is say a that. Pri- is, is, no. a private con- is, is a private conversation yeah. where Trump yeah. is just trying to make the guy laugh, and he says some stuff, and you know what? And Trump has a job, and Billy Bush what? doesn't. What? what? I think Trump has a job, Bush, and Billy Bush doesn't. I think it was because Bush... Uh, uh, put that tape uh, made it public and uh i think that it was it was an nbc that said that uh, he he shouldn't have done it i i guess they wanted the uh the right to uh, to expose it uh there, there was something about uh you know he that he did it and he and it was done well, all during, i know all i know uh, is that the guy the guy got... i want to hear the tapes where alex is at the bar with someone and he's bragging about something that he's never done just to make someone laugh. Full face, SG. Full face. Huh? Full face, SG. Uh, uh, there we okay. go. Hey. Uh, 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 Alex uh, is never at the bar. <laughs> I was never at a bar. I never went to bars. Never went to bars. 2 a.m. club, but that was for pinball. <laughs> that was for pinball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've been in bars for pinball as I sip my Coke, you know. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying Trump is innocent. I'm just saying people, men, get together and they they exaggerate and they do and they say stuff. Well, let's it's, look. Let's. No, I get that. Just, I get that. But he, the guy, lost his job. Yeah, that's a For terrible him, point. Because well, he's a rat. He ratted him out. Who? Ooh. Billy Bush. Billy Bush didn't rat him out. Yes, he did. He was How? there. Why would he, he rat him out? Why would he talk? <laughs> he had nothing to do he's with the it. One, he's the one that they that, were going he, after. They were going after Trump, and Billy Bush got pulled into it. Oh, he got pulled into it. I Billy see. Bush was sitting was in the truck when Trump was talking about it to him, and he was just saying, like, "Oh yeah, laugh. Laugh. But not, it was open not, mind. Wait, you guys have you guys have a, a, a misinformed uh, aspect of history. They were in together. I, they were in together, and they were having a private conversation. Yes. And he's and, and yeah. Trump said some stuff just to be braggadocious, just to just make right. the guy laugh, just to make the guy laugh. And then Billy Bush decided, okay, I'm going to use this against him, and I'm going to make no, it. No, 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 no. That's no, not no. what happened. That no, no, exactly. no, no. The press was going after Trump. They pulled it out, and Billy Bush got yanked into it. Yeah. How did they? How did they pull out? They were going after they, Trump and his big mouth. Let me agree with you. Let me agree with you. Just say you're correct. Let me just say you're correct for a second, okay? Wait a so, minute. You're, you're coming if, from a different that's, planet. If that's, if that's the truth. Then, how did they get the the audio from Billy Bush? They, they didn't get it from Billy Bush. Bush. They, they, they didn't get it. They got somebody. Somebody. Somebody at Access Hollywood leaked it. It was just they had it, his, it, the how mic they was. It? They rec- who recorded it? No. The mic was on Bush uh, on Trump's lapel because they it were was going out for an bus. interview. Yeah, it was, it was in the bus. bus. Yeah, and they, the bus and the, 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 they hadn't turned off the sound. The, the Bush, mic. Did Billy Bush record it or not? No, he no, didn't record it. Was it was in the Access Hollywood bus, and they recorded it from the bus. It was it was the bus <laughs> mic. They all had no. They all had mics on them. Individually, yeah. and, and they, they were, were already yeah, started. They were. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. They were starting to. They, they were starting to record. Had to do with Bush. Why they, would he leak his own shit? They were running. Right, hold then, on a second. He, hey, he SG, SG, hold on a second. Let me explain this to you because I know this business. Okay, so does Ray. Uh, they were shooting for Access Hollywood. They were getting ready for Trump and and Billy Bush to come out of the bus. So the mics were hot. The camera was on. Uh, the uh, the uh, door to the to the thing, and they shot this. Now that becomes ro- t- tape they didn't use on the show, didn't use that at all. But they still had it in their files. 
Somebody, and I don't know who, at Access Hollywood leaked it to the press. Okay, so that's how it happened. Billy Bush, exactly. and Billy Bush is only guilty of one thing. He didn't, he didn't say to Trump, oh, let's not wait, not a way to talk about women. But he was right. trying to keep Trump happy. He wanted to keep him amiable so that when they did an interview, there wouldn't be a hostility between them. And I think Billy Bush got fucked. OK, yeah. he lost the Today Holy Show fuck. job. He lost the Today Show job. You know, everything just terrible. They were they were in the bus getting ready to walk out. They turned the lapel mics on early because they knew and the interview was going to happen. But uh, Trump started joking around. Billy Bush was just going along with it because he didn't want to piss him off. They walk out of the a bus then they start the interview. And like Alex said, they had made the mics hot early. It was, a, it was a recording that was stored somewhere, and somebody leaked it. It had nothing to do with Billy Bush leaking anything. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, you nothing. you learn very early in this business. MK's gone again. Full face. Every full face alive. again, uh, SG. Full face again. SJ L is gone again. SG. Yeah. Every yeah. mic. Yeah. Every no, mic. Well, every is mic, a mic. Uh, always consider that a mic, every mic is live. I, yeah. I, I forgot that once myself and if Trump because I was wearing. I was, it probably would have been stuffed away in a drawer. When I was doing a, uh, a one of the TV shows I did, like one of the uh, uh, th things, of, uh, what was the, what was the show that I did for like oh, the comedian six show? Years? Yeah, comedy, comedy tonight. tonight. Uh, I, comedy I had a, I had a, a lavalier on, and I went down. I took a leak. When I came back up, the sound guy said, "We heard that." <laughs> you know. hey, so hey, you gotta be careful. Sometimes, sometimes in musicals, um, when you go off stage. And so you fucked up one of the dance numbers or whatever. Yeah. And, and if the sound guy doesn't turn off the sound, you can hear the actor like going, fuck, I fucked that up. Well, what I learned to do after that was when I wasn't going around, I would just switch it off. I, you know, go down to the belt and switch. Yeah. The, switch it off. Well, you know, you know Mike. Uh, when I helped you out at Camel, you uh, we were in the car going somewhere and you had given me the uh, the the com you had the conversation with me where you said every mic is a live mic well and when you're in a studio yeah. uh, even though you're in a commercial or something uh, you got to consider that the mics are live right. you know and so you don't the minute you walk into a studio you don't swear unless it's Sirius XM then I then I cursed all the time but but it, in regular radio Whenever you were in the studio, you just didn't curse. You, the, the switch went off in your head. No cursing. Boom. Right. That's it. You know. You see it there. You don't say it. I didn't even like talking from the mic in the other studio that that went to you. I used to just use hand signals. Yeah. So I mean, it, it can it, pick it up. Yeah. It can pick it up. But that's from uh, that's point. how that's how they got it, SG. And I I hear that somebody over there. In fact, I think if I remember correctly, the company that produces Access Hollywood held investigation to try to find out who found that tape and leaked it. Wow. But somebody there who, of course, didn't like Trump, but knew about the tape, and maybe they even had a copy of it lying around because they put it on as part of a gag reel. You when know? I was looking to see who might have leaked it on online, yeah. uh, there was a comment from Billy Bush saying he wished he had changed the conversation. Well, yeah. I mean, because yeah, he felt he sounded uncomfortable even when he was, you know, you could hear it. He sounded uncomfortable. Yeah. He was just going along with it. Now, speaking about Trump, as long as we were talking about him, God, uh, we're talking about the president for a change today. Hmm. It's his birthday today, too. Is it? Yeah, he got a good. Oh, well, he got a, he got a, my birthday. He got I a, didn't know that. He got oh, a, we should he, sing happy birthday. For he got him. a very yeah. good, uh, very good present today. Uh, he got an in, uh, basically an indictment against his uh, his uh, philanthropy, against his foundation that they used uh, money from the Trump Foundation for their own personal use, and they include in that the ten thousand dollar painting at Mar-a-Lago of Donald I Trump. It was Twenty-five or twenty, but uh, so Kevin's got a birthday tomorrow. How old are you going to be? Sixty-one. Really? Oh wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so who's count? Wow. <laughs> You're young. Yeah. Mark young. Warner and I share a birthday uh, next week, June 24th. Who? Who's that? Mark Thorner's birthday oh, Mark and Thorner. mine is June 24th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my birthday is December 18th. The only reason I mention that, remember it. Uh, <laughs> Write it down. But he's, you know, I, you know, I think his philanthropy is in a lot of trouble. They got, a, they got, uh, I, I don't know how many different 
um, things against it. And they're and they're uh, they've they've they're serving Trump and they're serving uh, the Trump brothers, and uh, uh, Ivanka. So, yeah. oh oh, the sons. Yeah. What, what were you uh, saying? What were you, you can't indict a sitting president. Yes, you can. You can for things like that. I mean, yes, if can. well, if you can't, why why uh, why did they? What they're doing is they're suing basically the philanthropy. And they want to put it out of business and make it so that Trump can't, for 10 years, run another philanthropy. Yeah, well, he won't have to because uh, when he gets elected in 2020, uh, that, that'll cover at least eight years. And mm -hmm. Well, I honestly believe he wanted to become president to keep out of jail. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Well, that's not a smart guy. That's a conniving asshole. They never would have investigated all of these things if he didn't become president. You know, if if they didn't, if he didn't win the presidency, he would have gone back to real estate and and TV. You know? Yeah, he wasn't very big in real estate by that time. You know, he, he everybody makes a big deal about what a great businessman he was. He was a terrible businessman. He was horrible. He, and everybody in New York, all the, all the real businessmen, all the real billionaires laughed at him and said, this guy is such a bad businessman. All he's doing, he's merchandising his name. He, he, he kind of bu he built a brand based on the fact that this is a billionaire and he knows how to make money and all of that. Oh, he's a and, billionaire. Now, and, and now I'll put it on steaks and I'll put it on ties and I'll, and I'll uh, put it on the front of a lot of those buildings he didn't build. He simply franchised his name out there. That's true. It's and like those guys that have 10 Ferraris lined up in a, in a parking lot and then they say, I can show you how to make money. You know, and, yeah, uh, exactly. Or some exactly. Yacht. No, exactly. But that's what he was doing. And network the, the, marketers. The the, yeah. the fact is that he, um, uh, you know, this was, a, you know, this was it, he Trump City. I have, I have some friends who live in a building that says Trump on the front of it, an apartment house that says Trump on the front of it, which just recently the Trump got torn down because they went to court and sued, and they didn't want Trump's name on the building anymore. Because they felt it devalued the worth of their apartments. Sure. Yeah. Hello, yeah. John Perulis. You're very quiet. Hi. You have very nice lighting there. It's kind of like. Uh, yeah, it's mood lighting. You know, but I mean, it's it's yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's like good lighting. Who's your Who's lighting? In the dark. <clears throat> huh? I, yeah. I, well, uh, you know, the uh, summer solstice is happening, and the the light is shifted, and. I'm in a room with a giant window uh, looking out at trees. So that's putting yeah. out the light there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fill light over here and a broadcast mic over there. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I got my. <laughs> there, there's oh, uh, Ray up. trying to fix his lighting. Um, <laughs> I just. Hey, I, I had a question for you, Alex. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was watching an interview with Larry King and Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. And it's when Larry King uh, allegedly insulted Seinfeld by saying, oh, did your show get canceled? And Seinfeld went ballistic. And I'm wondering, did you ever have a moment like that uh, on the air or something where you went ballistic because of a stupid question? What, what do you mean, me? I went ballistic? Yeah, you. Yeah. Um, well, no, because I'm usually the host of the show, so the only I'm asking other people stupid questions. <laughs> All right. You know. Yeah, I, th I thought uh, you know Seinfeld was kind of okay with his response. I mean, you know, it's a very popular show. It, what he had seven million viewers or something. Uh, no, the only you know. I you know I very seldom have, I can't I can't say that in in interviews that I've ever really had really embarrassing moments. You know. Uh, I have had people walk out on me. Oh, really? But, but uh, uh, Susan Brown Miller, who is a feminist, uh, she uh, walked uh, out on me. But she walked out on me because she, not because of anything I did. She just she didn't like the people she was in the room with. Oh. Uh, because uh, I had other guests on. It was a group discussion, and the others were feminists as well. But she didn't like them, and so she made an excuse and I'm leaving. You know, and acted like it was me, but it wasn't me. Um, it wasn't slate. It wasn't Slayton or anything. No, like that. no. But uh, 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 you know, I mean, I've had it, I've had embarrassing moments years ago. I tell, love to tell the story about how I, I promoted a uh, 
a dance in Petaluma, California. Hey, it's right nearby. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with uh, with uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Wow. Yeah, uh, it wow. was my first uh, time I ever promoted a actual concert. Okay, and I and this other guy did it together, and so they all came into town. This was right after Jerry Lee married his 13-year-old cousin. Because that's the yes. way they do things down there. there, there uh, there, and, there um, uh, <laughs> Great balls of fire. And, and so we're backstage, and the musicians are setting up, and there's a musician there, and I uh, get to talking with him. We, we're getting along really well, and, you know, very loose and very nice conversation. And I'm trying to cozy up to him. So I, I said, uh, by the way, is it true that Jerry Lee married his 13-year-old cousin? And he mm -hmm. looked at me. With this look in his face, I can only, you can only imagine what it looked like. He looked at me and said, yes, she's my daughter. No! Oh! 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 Yikes! I gotta go fat woman if she's pregnant. You're fat, that, that, that. I've done that. I've done that. Everybody's yeah. done that. <laughs> hey, congratulations yeah, on what? On the baby. I'm not pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. You had the baby already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. I just uh, it, it just uh, a whole bunch of things just lately have been bothering me. Of course, the whole you know thing with uh, with uh, net neutrality. That in combination with the fact that in fact they they settled they made the deal in two days. The check has been written and everything. Uh, for the sale of uh, oh. Time Warner to AT&T. Uh, uh, AT&T, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the problem here is, of course, that you have no net neutrality now, so they go, oh, you, you don't want to, you know, we don't want to run any other motion picture company. We don't want to run any other competing service to HBO on our system. Of course. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the state of Washington voted for foreign net neutrality so they're going to enact it statewide uh can they do that if i believe federal... i believe so because you know yeah. when you're talking about cable you're talking about li lines that are are locally fed the, the yeah. internet once you go up on out to the internet that's a different story altogether but to get there you got to have a landline of some yeah. sort uh, you're, you're, you mean fiber optic? Fiber optic, or or, or yeah. cable, or whatever. You know. Yeah. Uh, you have to, and so I think locally they can say net neutrality uh, is the order of the day. You know, and you can't. Uh, My God, we're losing net neutrality. Whoa! Listen, SG, you're going to hate it when you find out that your company, your, the company you belong to or that you get your service from, doesn't want to carry oh, yeah. something because that happened, that they happened own it. That happened a couple of times, but the, 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 the reality of net neutrality is it's going to give a bunch of smaller companies the opportunity to build their businesses. No, it isn't. Going, no, it isn't. And, no, it and isn't. It's going, what? No, it isn't. No, it, that's the big lie. All right. That's the What's big the lie today? from... What's the date today? Uh, yep. Today is uh, the uh, 14th. 14. No, it's, it's uh, Trump's birthday. But anyway, so uh, I'll check within with you six months from now. Well, no, it is, uh, the, this panic wait, about wait, wait, The problems about net neutrality are not going to rear their ugly head till several there's, years there's, from now. For the time couple, being, for the time being, listen to me, SG. Listen to me, SG. Listen to me. With, with AT&T. Can, can you hear me, SG? Can you hear me? Here, here's what I'm saying to you. No, you're not going to be able to tell in six months. These guys are going to be really goody two-shoes for a while. But later on down the road, they have the ability to screw you over, and at that point they will. Okay? In other words, we don't have any control over that now. And they can use their, uh, their, their business's uh, uh, priorities uh, to prevent you from getting competitors, they they can they can, mm -hmm. but the uh, the market will allow uh, bullshit bullshit to... bullshit. They'll do it anyway. Are we in a capitalist society or not? Yes, but you know what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to buy two services instead of just one in order to get what one used to supply you. So walk me through that. 
walk you through that? Let's say yeah. AT&T decides we own HBO, we don't want Showtime on our service. So you've got to maybe go over to some other person, but they say, hey, we, you know, we're owned by so-and-so and, and we have Showtime, but we won't run that HBO because that's not run by AT&T. So now you got to buy both of them in order to get all the stuff you want. What do you mean? But but then the Don't consumer you says, you know what, we're Ray, not going to stand Ray, for that. Ex we're not going to buy that. And then, first of all, it's it's just it's just it, it's just a bunch of people just panicking, and that's what it is. Ray, explain it it's, to him. Ray, I can't explain it any better than you just did, Alex. I don't know what else to say. All I'm saying is your options will not be as much as they are now. You won't be able to go to a. Uh, 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 AT&T service and get everything because they're going to give you what they own. They're going to give you CNN, okay? But then maybe they're not going to give you Fox because Fox maybe is owned by Comcast, at, you know? Uh, yeah, so I, how, long, I, how long will that take to for people well, to I, say... Well, I don't know. I, you know. I don't know when it's going to happen. It's the fact that it can. You know? Broadcasters will, will put some pressure to enact it because... Well, I got a trade journal, and one of the complaint of newscasters in the field who are not using microwave transmission to transmit video, they do it like streamers like myself do it. They use hardware encoders or something like that, and they're always complaining yeah. about uh, stringers uh, clogging up the internet with uh, live streaming to Periscope or YouTube or Facebook. Yeah. So they under the the uh, abolition of net neutrality, those broadcasters with the big bucks will get favorable uh, bandwidth. So well, that's well, a problem. Uh, it, that's it, anti-democratic. It, it, it's, it's bad for us where something like Netflix is concerned because they're probably going to charge Netflix more for carriage on a system, okay, uh, on an Internet system or for allowing it to go through at least at the kind of speeds they need to be able to send 4k do you know that something like i think 60 percent of all bandwidth in the united states after six o'clock at night is netflix right. wow you know yeah. so but what you know what are they going to do with that and how much is netflix going to wind up costing us because they're going to have to raise their prices because they're paying more and they don't want to be shunted to the slow lane because then they can't have the 4k and they can't have the hd and all of that you know uh it's I, I heard I heard a guy who was had his own small ISP up in New York, and he said that you know this whole uh, eliminating net neutrality will be beneficial to him because there are certain aspects. Well, beneficial that, to him because he's an ISP. Right. Yeah, but it's not beneficial to me. I'm not an ISP. No, 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 no. It's beneficial to because he's going to be able to, to uh, contain costs for his customers. So he's not going to lose customers. Had it had it gone forth, uh, where you know before this legislation, um, then he would have lost customers because the pricing would have priced him out of the market. Well, how would it price this, him out of the market? This is a small guy up in New York. Well, yeah, well, he's going to get crushed like a roach, you know, because because the big companies are going to come in and just uh, gobble up he everything. Said, he said. His, he said that his 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 deal was that he was in favor of this because he would no longer be crushed by these pricing. These other, you know, there's other well, pricing. How, how is his pricing being hurt? How's his pricing being hurt by net neutrality? That I don't understand. Because, no, there are other things. There are other elements. Well, to I, that. But I can't just take that on, on face value. I've got to have a, 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 an idea of why that would hurt him if he had net neutrality. Well, I heard the guy. I heard him, and yeah. I, you know, that's what he said. By the way, the minstrel has left the room. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Bray. Yeah, I had crashed there. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so about uh, about 18 years ago, we had a small ISP here called ISP Channel in Palo Alto, mm -hmm. and they put K, uh, um, K, uh, what do you call it? Fiber optics to all the telephone poles, and we were going to have it installed the whole city. Then Comcast came in, and through some mechanism, I don't know, they completely got rid of ISP Channel. Now we have we have uh, we have um the uh god i can't think today the 
The fi fast. The fiber. Yeah. The fiber optics on every pole, but it ain't ever going to get into our house because Comcast, it's not in Comcast's best interest. And uh, that, that, I yeah. couldn't believe it. So that was over. And that was 18 years ago. Well, you see, here, ago. here's what, hap what has happened, too. In most areas, you only have, for your area, one cable company. In New York, we finally got a second one, and I got Fios here. Okay, I which is one. fiber optic. Well, no, we have AT&T, too. That's well, right. We, AT&T yeah. U-verse. But, you know, it's still, it's a very small, uh, a, a, very, another one? A, a very small universe here that we're talking about when it comes to companies. you got to realize that. So what's happening, just check it out. Who are the companies that are buying up the big media companies today? They, every one of them are an Internet service provider. Okay, because they want the product to put on their systems. And once that's in place, they're then going to be not liking competitors. For instance, Isn't that as I said. Vertical integration? Huh? A vertical integration when a company uh, is able to do everything in house? Yeah, uh, that's very nice, but when all the major internet companies are down to a handful, that's scary. Because in the old days, you know, when we first started out with uh, this whole cable nonsense and, and internet stuff, you used to have a ton of services. I remember my first uh, internet service provider was Hooked.net in San Francisco. They don't, ex they don't exist anymore. Yeah, mine was Value.net. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you find out, it, most of these companies, all their businesses were gobbled up by other businesses. Uh, and it's it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's kind of like Pac-Man. It's eating up the board, you know. Uh, and and um, but Alex, that's happening in no, almost no, every no, but, industry. But, but what is in the best interest of the consumer? The best interest of the consumer is that he has choice. I, yeah, and when, I and when you do, and when you don't have choice because uh, that uh, it doesn't exist, then you got a problem. Sure. When, when I first when I first opened up a store, there were three hundred mills making yeah. carpet. Now there are like five. Yeah, uh, it's consolidation. It's made it difficult. But to, weren't you better uh, off yeah. when there were more carpet makers? Yes, I was. Okay, so there there's your there's the point, and that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about net neutrality, and we're talking about all these companies. You know, you know, we see these science fiction movies about the corporation, like this one corporation <laughs> runs everything. And that's possible because all we got to do is have a couple more gobble each other up and we got the one corporation. That's the way everything is going now. Why should they, that industry be penalized? Uh, when, why, when why, should we, why should we say that's it? Why should we say that's good? Why should we say that's good, Phil? I don't say it's good. It just so happens to be the way that it is. Yeah, yeah but we don't have to leave it like that. We can fight against it. Well, you uh, are fighting against it, Ray Renati, in, in this uh, in fabulous entertainment medium called the theater. Live performance. I, I You know, when I, I know. saw the show, uh, I was, Samantha and I were blown away by all the playbills for different kinds of offerings going on in the san francisco berkeley uh oakland even even the north bay here so uh you know i i, I think electronic media is just going to tap out at a certain point and uh we we may see more theater i mean that's what i would like to see I, there, I there are 350 theater companies in the bay area yeah wow yeah. that's amazing i know it is I mean, your play, I, I, we had no idea what we were in for. I mean, I read one review before I went, and it was it was a good review. And when we saw the play, we were just blown away. I mean, that play was so tight, uh, you know, and, and it's not the only one. There's dozens of things like that happening. Hey, 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 we leave the, uh, we leave, leave the reviewing to Michael Snyder, please. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's like it, it will in the entertainment industry. There's there are rules about casting directors versus talent agents. So the talent a talent agent cannot uh, charge you anything. Um, the casting director and a casting director cannot charge you anything. A casting director and a talent agent have to be separate entities. Yes. Because b way back when they when they started when they did some vertical integration. They ended up completely ripping off all of the talent. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and there was all kinds of, yeah. How can they pay for the couch if they can't charge you anything? <laughs> Goodwill. You can get a couch at Goodwill for like 100 bucks. Yeah, I understand. Okay. <laughs> Um, but you know, I mean, uh, you know, I talk about radio, you know, I mean, uh, uh, when radio was deregulated basically, uh, and people could buy up as many radio stations as they wanted. Now all the radio stations are owned by about five groups and that's it. And it's ruined radio. It's ruined radio. It's ruined my ability to earn a living. It's ruined your ability to uh, have a wide amount of broadcasting styles in your market, you know? Um, so, Alex, what, what's your prediction, your worst prediction about net neutrality going away? Well, my worst prediction, I've already told you, is that these companies, because greed always is the order of the day, are, are going to suddenly throttle down those things which compete against their best interests. Exactly. Okay. And, right. and, that, and, so and that, we're, we're, everything's going to be higher priced. Uh, eventually, it's going to raise the prices on what people pay for internet service and so on. It's going to raise the price. For instance, Netflix probably will not be able to continue giving their service for the price that they're giving it for now because uh, they're going to be charged more for carriage on these uh, on these systems to be in a fast lane. Aren't what, the prices- what, will the, what will the people who are who are buying that do? Well, they, 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 what do you mean? What will they do? The, the yeah, fact, the consumers. A, a, a lot the of consumers? those, a lot of those consumers might not be able to afford uh, Netflix anymore. And then, they, what would they do, though? Well, then, what okay. they would do is they would probably go for the cheaper uh, version of Netflix, which is being run by the good auspices of your internet company, who can keep the prices low and keep the prices low for the. You know, when when you can charge Netflix. A ton of money for carriage, and then one of your own people, like let's say you own HBO, very little. Okay, that then becomes a very unfair playing field for everybody. And then when when those people exit and they lose that revenue, what will Netflix do? What do you mean when those people exit? What will Netflix do? Netflix might have to go out of business eventually. Or it's, their price. Right now, it's the biggest company and in the world. Therefore, capitalism no they won't be able to lower their Thank price bill wait a minute hold on a second what? They won't... just made my point what what, what, what point did i just make huh? <laughs> they'll go out of business if uh they raise their prices well, no the point much. i'm making is is that what happens is is that they're going to say uh netflix we want you to pay more for carriage on our system than you're than you're paying now uh and, and for you to be able to be streamed fast you got to pay us a fee uh, and, and, therefore, and, the, and, the and, and, the and therefore, maybe it might companies. become impossible for them to do, uh, you know, these people will and change. yet that same company, if let's say it's AT&T, if it's AT&T says, but of course, HBO can have it for nothing. Let me refer you to Phil. Let, let him tell you. Okay. Phil? Oh, I, I was just wondering, uh, just like the government regulates uh, c- uh, communications and utility, they regulate utilities. Mm-hmm. Are uh, are they going to turn these things into utilities where they uh, the local government sets the price as to what they can charge? I believe they are. If I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. They are somewhat considered utilities. There was a years ago the cable companies. Uh, right, right. had to uh, were worried about uh, the fact that for instance you have public access channels and people could just be on a public access channel on a first come first serve non-discriminatory basis and what kind of protection do they have if somebody on one of those channels does something criminal for instance let's just say that as an example how responsible is the uh, is the cable company so they came up I can't remember what the name of the thing was in which the companies were were only res, uh, responsible to carry it; they were not responsible for what was on it. Okay. The content, huh? Yeah, uh, and I think that may still hold. Uh, it, it, I'm trying to remember what they called it. I'm, uh, I used to know the uh, common carrier status or something like that. Um, that that's why I wonder. Yeah, I think it was common carrier be- status is what they wanted, and I think by doing that, they wanted to be considered a utility. Well, I, that's what I'm thinking that the, what this net neutrality is going to do is move these guys towards becoming utilities. And then but I think they, they already they are, Phil. Phil, I think they already are. 
Yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, I don't think they set the prices, though, as they do with uh, PG&E, for instance. Uh, believe or it or not, air. absolutely, you're absolutely wrong, Phil. In New York City, New York yeah. City, every time Time Warner, or now it's Spectrum, wants to go in and raise their rates, they have to go get permission from the city. Okay, so what are you worried about? No, I'm not worried about what they're going to charge me for the cable service or internet service. What I care about is what I take off those internet services and whether I'm even going to be able to get it at all because they won't carry it because they own that particular company. If they dump Lifetime, you could have anything that you Listen, want. Listen, they could dump Lifetime tomorrow and I wouldn't miss it. And in fact, you know how big amount of your cable bill goes to Lifetime? Something like, portion, five, something like five dollars a month. Yeah. And when's the last time you watched Lifetime? When's the last no. time you had a vagina? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, but what I'm all I'm all I'm saying, Phil, is is, is, is the point here is is not so much it's going to cost you money because the cable companies are going to charge you more. Or the, or the internet companies are going to charge you more. But if they're going to charge more to people like Netflix, and you do subscribe to Netflix, you do subscribe to Hulu, you do, if you, I don't know whether you do or you don't, I do, uh, you do a, a subscribe to Showtime, HBO, whatever. And, yeah. and that's where it's going to start costing you more money. Yes, SG, why are you lighting a match? I think he farted. He bringing, wants a cake. I, light to this conversation oh i see <laughs> yes ray well it, it's pretty simple so say uh, uh, uh time warner own, uh, owns hbo and they don't own showtime so they're going to provide you with hbo mm -hmm. then if if showtime wants to be on their pipe they're going to charge showtime a shitload of money to be on their pipe and you're going to end up having to pay time warner a hell of a lot more, more money to see Showtime. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's and or you're gonna have or you're gonna have to go directly to Showtime and pay whoever owns Showtime a hell of a lot of money. So you're gonna be paying double, and it's gonna be less efficient, and probably the quality is gonna go down because it's gonna be less competition. Because that's what happens when there's less competition. But the the they charge you for HBO. They charge you for Showtime now. And you and you can have a choice. You want well, one or mind both. Mind you, let, let, let's, not let's, let's forget about uh, let's forget let's forget about those for a second because well, what you're talking about. Wait a minute, hold on a second, Phil, Phil. What we're talking about with those, with HBO and Showtime and so on, those are broadcast over your cable system. Yeah. Netflix, you get over your cable system, but you get it over your cable internet connection. Yeah. That's okay. And then you pay them. Now let's say they say to uh, Netflix. Well, you know, we got HBO, and we only want people to have HBO, and we only want to charge them for HBO and whatever. Uh, uh, we're not going to carry Netflix. Or if you want to carry here, we're going to give you a prohibitive price for you to get on the fast lane on our service. That's what I'm talking about. Hulu. And you could uh, just get it off the Roku. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, they could they could conceivably do it with this show, although I don't know why, because they, <laughs> they can put us on the slowest lane possible, and we got no problem, you know. And it's stupid. What? <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, you, know, you might see if uh, that a, a company might say uh, an internet company might say uh, we don't want to carry Skype uh, because uh, Skype uses up too much bandwidth, and Skype needs to pay us a lot of money if they want to if they want to keep uh, have their have their Skype. See, work uh, on the system. You, you hit the nail on the head. Capitalism does not exist for the benefit or the good of the people. It exists for profit alone and those who uh, amass that profit. And we're seeing, uh, like you mentioned, Alex, that concentration of wealth shrinking and shrinking and shrinking into fewer individuals and fewer big companies. They have almost zero interest this, in this, doing what's uh, right. This, for this whole thing sounds like the sky is falling. You know? No, uh, but it isn't the sky is falling. It's the sky is falling eventually. You know, it's going to slowly. The sky's going to come crashing down on your head when the next fucking recession hits, possibly in a year or two. Well, I don't know that. that I don't know that we're yeah. going to see the full effects of this. We never. We didn't see the full effects of uh, Clinton deregulating radio till right. a few yeah. years later, Wait. when it became like a land rush to try and buy all these stations by people who didn't have the money to back them. 
I mean, uh, yeah. we already had two of the biggest, we only about five major broadcast organizations in the United States now, and two of them um, uh, recently filed for p bankruptcy protection, okay? Uh, never heard of before in the broadcast business, you know? Yeah, you know, and the other thing is we're just looking at, we're just looking here at entertainment, in electronic entertainment, but like, this this is uh, just one example of how there's a greater divide between the rich and the poor in this country, and we're just allowing it to happen and saying it's capitalism. Well, capitalism needs to be regulated, and there are all kinds of laws on the books that are just being ignored for now, whereas exactly. before they weren't. And, and uh, it, it, it's if well, you think it's the sky is falling, that's fine, but... You yeah, the sky where, is falling and it eventually will fall and and we will be a nothing country. That's where Trump is saying there's too much regulation and he's trying to cut regulation back so that capitalism could work. Then you, know, you can't capitalism doesn't work when you overregulate it. Oh uh, I, no, I no, think no, that's, no, that's a not huge what I fallacy. said. That's capitalism not what I is said. working fine. But the thing, the thing about this net, the thing about this net neutrality, they have not eliminated everything. There's still going to be some watchdog aspects to make sure that people are not getting screwed. Who's watching the hen house? Yeah. Well, yeah. Who's watching the hen house? A bunch of wolves. The FCC is boxes. part of that. The, uh, have you read the regulations? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 what FCC? Wait a minute. What FCC? That uh, FCC we have now well, is I mean, so you're gonna inefficient. You're going to hate everything I say. What if, it, no, what no. If it is. Uh, believe me. Tell, you're, tell, you're, me wait a minute. tell me someone that SG, you, SG. Someone you respect that would, you would want as an overseer of this. I, I'm, I'm not going to give you a name right now. I have to, I have to think well, about that. But, no, can. wait a minute. The point is, the point is, you're talking to somebody. You're talking to somebody who all my all his life. SG, listen to me. Where everything is ignored through uh, uh, the SG, uh, net neutrality. SG, gonna, SG, SG listen to me. To make sure that people do not SG, get screwed. listen to me. Oh, wait, a minute, wait, a minute, oh, wait a minute. Nobody knows the FCC better than I do. I have worked with the FCC for right. practically all my life. And let me tell you right now, the FCC that exists right now is the least efficient FCC we've ever had. Okay. And I can tell you that because I know that for a fact. I've seen it uh, happen. There, it, it, the, the way that it's been, let's just take FCC out of it. And I agree with you. Let's just take that out of it. There's, there's, you brought there's, it up. And there's controls in place. And it, and it goes beyond. It, this is not a... Uh, thing that everyone goes wild, there's still going to be controls where people are being looked at. Period. Uh, I a dream on. Yeah. By whom? By whom? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, the, By whom? The, By the FCC, uh, uh, I listened to Ajit Pai, who's the head of the FCC, <laughs> um, um, explain why this is going to be so wonderful for people and so on. And he doesn't even know what he's talking about. You know, he's not even an expert. You know, the thing is, let me tell you something about the FCC. When, it first, when I first came into knowledge of them because they were controlling the business I was in, they were basically a technological organization. They wanted to make sure that people didn't override other people's signals and that they, every radio station had fiscal responsibility and was able to pay to keep the radio station going. Uh, and... Uh, Occasionally, I think occasionally they, I think once took a license away in something like 30 years, and that was for malfeasance, financial in, improprieties. Um, but they were basically a technological organization who wanted to make sure your transmitter was working properly and so on. Only in recent years has it become a proactive group in which politics of the day were being coming into play. And so, therefore, you know that's why it's not do? an effective FCC anymore. What? You know what kind of crap the FCC does? Uh, you know, if you got a station and at midnight you don't sound that uh, thing, that your call letters and where you're, uh, where you're from, you can get a $25,000 fine. And uh, so I, I got a friend that has this program, and he sets it up for the different radio stations so that that automatically happens. But he said, I don't think you have to do it at midnight. I think it used to be you had to identify your station every hour on the hour. 
Yeah. Okay, the but the, but, one, but that that doesn't exist anymore. It, it, it well, I'm telling you that right now it does. Well, it exists maybe for once a day now. It used to be 24 yeah, times once a day. Once a day. It's it, and it's midnight. But uh, what happens is other stations will listen to see if you sounded it, and if you didn't sound it, they're the ones that'll turn you in, uh, so that you get the fine. Uh, it, it believe me, believe me, believe me. Be having to do it once a day uh, is 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 nothing. It used to be twenty four hours a day. Uh, yeah. You would hear you would hear a guy over at Channel Seven at every break go Channel Seven New York. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It used to be thirty minutes <laughs> every hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> well, I used to know the announcers who did that, and they used to have to be in in that room to just go they were getting paid one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year in those days just to go channel seven new york right well, and then they would get they would leave computer. they would leave the booth they would go downstairs because every one of the major networks there was a bar on the first floor yeah. they would go okay. down have a couple of drinks come up Shoot channel, upstairs, channel seven KGO, new york San Francisco. now <laughs> what i used to love to do was to hear the sign off every night where they go this is channel seven new york signing off for the evening you know, and then they play the Star Spangled Banner. But by the time you got to yeah, that, yeah. this guy was so fucking drunk, he was slurring his words. <laughs> I always wanted that job. <laughs> oh, I, I, that, that job, uh, I knew several people. Fred Foy, who was the voice of the Lone yeah. Ranger, was, was the booth announcer at Channel 7 here in New York. And uh, they, you know, every time we came up with new contracts for the union, guess who got the biggest raises? Those fucking booth announcers. You know, do they want to give it to, <laughs> the, to the, the, the guys guy. working over at FM? <laughs> and now those are a bunch of hippies, you know. No, <laughs> we're going to give it to Fred Foy and the boys, you know. Channel 7, New York. Thank you very much, Fred. How, how, how much studying in school did that take you? you know? It's the baritone. ABC, it's the baritone. San Francisco. And they always used yeah. to do it like, we're really denying we're actually saying it. But Channel 7, New York. <laughs> <laughs> This is Rigo Chacon in San Jose. <laughs> Rigo Chacon. I remember w Rigo NBC? Chacon. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, SG, we, who knows what's going to happen with this. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen immediately. It's not going to happen tomorrow. That's not going to be the problem. But it, 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 greed will be the order of the day anytime you give it a chance to rear its ugly head. But anyway, hear that? That's music. And that means the show is over with. Hey, Jeff, thank you. You've been kind of quiet nice tonight, but I hope you've enjoyed listening to us. Kevin, good having you here tonight. Uh, and uh, SG, always a pleasure to have you here, as well as Mr. Perulis and Mr. Mayor. And where's Boddicker? What happened to Bod? Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. And Ray the Renati. Sky's falling. Hey, thanks to all of you. Uh, what I would like you to do is maybe give a big wave goodbye to everybody so that they can say goodnight to you. Okay, there they are. That's our citizens panel. A good one, too, folks. Hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow night. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jack uh, Bishop is next over this mo same uh, little gab net, as well as uh, uh, connections at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. So uh, uh, I would suggest that you uh, check in on that. And then I'll be uh, back tomorrow after Damian Chaplin does a little program called The, uh, the uh, Exchange. <laughs> um, did I say The Intersection was next? Yeah. Uh, 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 Damian will do show. And then at, at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, let me get this straight. 10 o'clock tomorrow night, Gabinet, New York. Uh, tomorrow night uh, at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life, uh, we will be back here. Uh, and as always, you know, I say it, I'll say it again. I like saying it constantly. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>